You know, I can still remember learning how to create a fake slash faux destination and thinking how awesome that was. And I'm going to show you in this video how to do it. It's really fairly simple. You need a little bit of setup to understand uh, how it all works here and, and really the reasons you would do that. And so I'll go through that. It'll be pretty extensive setup here. Um, but let me first talk about what if what a fake destination is, or a, I've seen it called a, a trash destination. Um, and why you want it. So a fake destination is what it exactly what the name implies. You are pretending to send a data flow somewhere, but in reality it just goes to nowhere. So you, you would use this in a lot of different places, uh, but it would purely be a development only type of a situation. You would not use a trash destination, a fake destination in a production level package, but you would use that during development. So one of the things that you get frustrated with if you work with any length of time in SSIS is that you're constantly getting these data validation warnings. And so you're going along, you're developing a pretty detailed package, and oh no, I get a data validation warning and I can't continue my development. Is my development working? I don't know. I've got some type of an error, and gosh, I'm, I'm really stuck. I don't know what to do. Well, a trash destination allows you to isolate purely the source and transformations. You don't have to worry about, is the, de is the destination available? Do I do the right data types at the destination? You can forget about all of that. You can focus on that later. You've got a fake destination. You're telling uh, integration services, hey, send it to this destination. The destination consumes the data and reports back success regardless of the columns that come in, regardless of what the types are, none of that matters. So it, having this trash slash fake destination allows you to purely focus on the source and the transformations. And then when you've got all that done, come back and replace the fake destination with the actual destination, and then you've got your complete package. I, I don't know. I hope that came across well. It, it may be easier to show rather than talk about here. So let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and launch the Visual Studio, and I'm just going to create an empty project. And I'm going to do this from scratch so that if you're watching this video out of sequence with the rest of the videos in the course, you'd still be able to follow along. It will require a little bit more setup, uh, but I think it makes it better overall for people. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to... Oh, well, you know what, I won't even use that. I'll, I'll keep it simple. I'm just going to create a text file on the root of my C drive, just trying to keep it as simple as I can, and I'll call it vendors. And in my vendors text file, I will have vendor ID, um, I don't know, add date, and is enabled. And so we'd have... Uh, 1998-01-01 and true and 2000 and you're probably recognizing the data types of these this would be probably an integer uh, a db date time and a boolean here so we'll save our file and close out and I'm back over here in integration services, so I go to my toolbox, I drag in a data flow task, double click on it, and so we want the source to be our flat file. And go get it, make a new connection manager. If I seem to be going fast through this, it's because we've done this a little bit uh, in chapter four already, uh, which is the particular chapter this video is from, so it might behoove you to go back and watch some of the other videos. So I'll just give it a name of source and browse to my file. Um, it's delimited. Um, it is uh, column names are in the first data row, so that when we go to columns, you can see vendor ID, add date, and is enabled. Um, and I'm not really going to deal with the data types too much yet. You could see that it brought them all in as non-unicode strings with a 50 width. You know, fine. For right now, this is not really that important. So I say OK. Look at the columns. Yay. I'll make them all output columns. Now we get to the point where 
it, traditionally, you would do one of two things. You would either add in a transformation or you would add in a destination. Well, which destination? Let's say that I'm doing some development and I've got to do some pretty serious transformations here. So I could come down here and I could drag you know, any particular one of these over here. Um, but what I want to show you, this is about the trash destination, the fake destination. And the easiest way to do it, it's a little tricky, is not to go to the destinations, is to go and use the row count. Now the row count transformation is not a transformation per se. It will take all of the rows that come from a source and it will count them and then it will store them in a variable. So I drag the output of the flat file source to the row count. And you can see that I still get my error message. And what the error message is really saying is that you need a variable to consume the number of rows coming in to the row count. So what I would do next is I go right click somewhere in the designer and I make a little variable and it's fine that it's scoped just to this data flow task. So I click here and we haven't covered variables thus far in the course that's in chapter 5. This is basic stuff here. So I just click the add variable um, counter and it defaults to an int32 data type which is perfect. That's the output of the row count. And so I double click on my row count and underneath my custom properties variable name, I choose the user counter. That's the one that we just created right there. And if you wanted to just type it in, there's your syntax. It's always going to be in the user namespace here and just the name of your variable. Okay. So you can see the description is it counts the rows in the data set. Okay. Uh, I'm not even going to worry so much about deciding which columns and all of that. We're just going to do that. And voila, we've created a fake destination. And I can actually run this now, and it will come up with success. And so it appears to SQL Server Integration Services that it was able to count two rows. Now this is really, really going to help you because it allows you at any point, you can get as complex as you want, but at any point you can drop, drop onto the surface a row count and you can have a fake destination. So instead of row count, I'd call this my fake destination. And you might come over and you might put a description on it that says remove before going live or replace with actual destination. And that way, you have this ab ability to develop these really, really complicated packages, but simply to focus on the sources and to focus, if we go back to the toolbox, on whatever your transformation is doing. This doesn't have to just come out of a flat file source. This could come out of many of the transformations as well, just for uh, just trying to keep this inside of a 10-minute time frame. I'm just showing you how to do this from a, a single source, but it can be the output of many different transformations. And it just serves as a faux or a fake or a trash destination. And once you're finally satisfied that all of your logic, all of your data type conversion, everything's taken care of, then just delete this guy and then come over here and say, oh, well, now I actually want to load this into a SQL server. And you drop it and you take that out and replace it. So very cool. Now, this is, by the way, not the only option for a fake destination. However, I think it's the easiest, and it's the one that you can do on a production server without installing third-party software. So there are some, there's even some free ones that are out there that you can install in your development environment, but you wouldn't really want to put those on a live production server. So this is the safest way, in my opinion, that allows you to create this and manage and work with a server. This is safe. You're going to be comfortable doing this type of thing, uh, and it's fairly easy for anybody who knows a little bit about SSIS to understand. Just throw them this video, right? <laughs>